U.S. border entry points in Mexico are now back to normal operations. This after large crowds tried to make entry all at once on Sunday, causing disruptions at at least three different border points. But while all eyes are on the southern U.S. border, that other border, the northern one, is facing its own set of immigration issues. CNN's Polo Sandoval visited one country road in a northern border town that's creating tensions between the United States and Canada. On a lonely frozen stretch of upstate New York, a dead end. This is where the U.S. and Canada meet at a makeshift unauthorized crossing known as Roxham Road. Anyone who treks across the border here into Quebec is told by Canadian authorities they will be immediately arrested. I have to advise you it's illegal to enter Canada here. Right now you're under arrest for crossing the border of Canada. It's illegal to enter Canada here. If you do so, you will be placed under arrest by the police. But every day, a seemingly endless stream of asylum seekers intent on trying to find safe haven in yet another country cross the line anyway. Come right in there. I'll take your baggage. Warnings are everywhere on this road in Champlain, New York. They don't deter the stream of people, many of whom have cobbled together a way to get to Manhattan, then take a bus to a town 28 miles south of here, and then pay a driver to drop them off at this tiny corridor. They're unaware of what lies ahead and the cold they'll face along the way. God bless you. Okay, let me see about a jacket. Some community members trying to help, providing them with warm clothes that they'll need. It's okay, it's okay. People from all over the world are crossing rocks at historic rates. We met a family from Nigeria, a man from Russia. No money, no money. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And this South American mother, in tears. Who tells me she's been traveling many days to get here. Giovanna tells me she and her 23-year-old daughter were denied foreign visas last year. When guerrillas in Colombia threatened to kill her, she says she was forced to close her business and flee. I feel I can have a better quality of life in Canada instead of remaining in the U.S., she told me, before she stepped over the border. Hola. Hola. After a brief detention, she'll likely be released to join fellow migrants who are learning the asylum process in Canada isn't easy either. These last few years have seen an influx in crossings that Canada is not prepared to handle. Simply securing appointments to obtain a work authorization can now take months or longer. This individual crossed in February and you're seeing that their date's actually February 11th, 2025, so two years. About an hour north of the border, over here also, Abdullah Daoud helps lead the refugee center in Montreal. So these numbers are a dramatic increase from the numbers that we were used to seeing uh, historically in Canada. The nonprofit working with the Canadian government to help guide refugees through the asylum process. Well, December saw an increase from November, January saw an increase from December, February saw an increase from January. Canadian government figures show a record 39,000 unauthorized entries into Quebec from the U.S. in 2022. Nearly all, according to experts, entered through Roxham Road. In January alone, crossings here neared 5,000. Compare that to just more than 2,300 a year before. U.S. and Canadian officials are discussing potential changes to the Safe Third Country Agreement. A loophole in that treaty is incentivizing migrants crossing from the U.S. to use Roxham Road. As your family grows, your space can start to feel a little crowded. Sting landed in Canada. He intended to spend his life here. Now his future is in limbo, and he says he knows who to blame. I got into contact with uh, a consultant back in India, and then uh, he applied for our visa application. Whatever was on our part, we did everything right. Singh says he paid that immigration consultant more than $11,000 and received what turned out to be a fake acceptance letter to college. Canadian immigration officials eventually caught on and issued this exclusion order telling him to leave the country. Singh is fighting to stay, but isn't allowed to work in the meantime. I'm not able to do anything, first of all. Nothing is added to my resume. My career is hampering. Hundreds of Indian students studying in Canada are now reportedly facing deportation. The fiasco is making headlines in India, and immigration officials here won't say how many are being told to leave. Other students sent CBC News similar fraudulent letters from separate colleges, also obtained through overseas immigration consultants. Because of uh, the, the crookedness or, or fraud of another person, 
Uh, they are innocent victims, students trusted the wrong guy. Some say Canadian border agents bear responsibility too and should have spotted the fake documents in the first place. We asked the immigration minister. How did Canada Border Services Agency not catch this and prevent these students from going through this nightmare? I've asked our team at IRCC to look into it to identify uh, the facts underlying the situation. Uh, this is extremely serious. If the students are forced to leave Canada, some have been told they won't be allowed back in for five years. Thomas Dagg, CBC News, Toronto.